Hi, I'm Carrie Murky, Chief Program Officer at Options. I'm thrilled to be uh, talking with Senator Patrick McMath this morning. Um, from the moment he was elected, he um, was quick to get involved with Options and the disability services community. Um, we were, were just chatting a minute ago. One of the first um, events that he attended as a newly elected senator was our legislative and business appreciation event uh, last year around this time. Unfortunately, we're not able to host that live this year, but we are hosting it via uh, Facebook and our website. So uh, we're going to just chat a little bit today um, about the impact that Senator McMath has had on our services and um, the larger community statewide. Um, so one of the um, things that was very impactful for us um, this year was Senate Bill 53, which Senator McMath uh, authored. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, I, like you said, that uh, last year was, uh, which seems like 10 years ago, uh, in some senses, um, was the very first uh, event that I went to as an official state senator. And um, it really, you know, I knew that I, I was familiar with ARC and, and options in particular, um, but that seeing kind of the work in action um, was really inspirational and, and kind of made it a priority to to help defend and promote um, you guys uh, and the services that you provide uh, wherever we can. And, and that was, that was, that made authoring Senate Bill 53 um, just that much more meaningful, I think, you know, to me. So what we tried to do there is, is make it, you know, a lot of, a lot of the arcs across, Louis all of the arcs across Louisiana were like businesses were, were struggling um, during the shutdown and, and you know, limited services um, and really taking financial hits. And so when we started to sort of open up um, again, how can we make it easier for the ARCs uh, and options to, um, to, to, to get back up on their feet again? And so that was the catalyst of Senate Bill 53. Let's see if we can't just make the process just a little bit easier, a little less expensive. Um, and it, it made it through the process and, um, and was signed by the governor. And it was, it was one of the bills um, that, I was, that I've been most proud of in my very short career here. So um, it, was, it was a fun one to, to really support and, and, and gather support and get through the process. Well, we certainly appreciate your leadership on that. It has made things a little bit easy for us. Um, you know, the, for anyone who doesn't know, this bill helped us streamline the process of, of rehiring staff who had been laid off because of the pandemic. And it, and it really helped financially and, and just helped us get our employees back quicker when we were able to. So we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, there were some certain onboarding um, requirements that, uh, uh, Per the state and and really it kind of given the shutdown and, and the mandatory nature of that um, felt that these requirements you know let's let's set them aside for a temporary purpose and uh, and again make it just a little bit easier a little less expensive so uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that it was helpful um, you know it wasn't this monumental cost saving measure but I, I do I do, given the feedback that we've gotten, um, it, it has made it, uh, has made it a little bit easier. So. Yeah. Every little bit helps, absolutely. Well, the other biggie was, right. was not really little. It was an additional appropriation um, that you guys helped us, um, all disability service providers across the state with. Um, you know, we're caring for people yeah. during this pandemic 24-7 um, and trying to keep them healthy and safe with fewer resources and less staff was a huge challenge. So um, basically we had to have a little more money to, to keep people um, healthy and safe. And, and you guys came through for us in a big way and helped infuse some additional funding in the entire disability service system. So um, I, we can't thank you enough for that um, and for being so involved. Well, I, 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 absolutely, again, um, you know, I'm going to give credit to, really to, to Senator Cameron Henry um, and President Cortez. They, you know, we, we all have, I guess there's a, there's a group of us that uh, 
at Options and, and the ARC reach out to um, for support. I'm honored to be included in that. Um, we had some meetings at my district office. And uh, after those meetings, I, you know, I gave Cameron a call. Um, he's the Senator from Metairie, who's a good friend of mine. And this was already on his radar. Um, and when it comes to finances, you, you, you want Senator Henry you know, on board. Uh, uh, he knows the budget back and forwards. And when, when it was pretty clear that this is something that was a priority for him, um, I just helped, you know, support where I could and, and, and shepherd it through the process. And, and, you know, it was a substantial amount of money to your point. And so um, just, another, just another good thing. It, look, you guys provide such a wonderful service to, um, to, to not only, you know, um, your, you know, the, the day clients, but, but also the families and, and supporting them as well. And, you know, in a perfect world, we've, we've, you guys have all the funding that you need. Unfortunately, you know, we're not in that position, but the, the chunk of money that we were able to allocate was, was substantial and, um, and, and I knew it helped. So I was happy to be in the background of that process. Well, we appreciate it. We, we appreciate your commitment to people with disabilities um, across the state and, and just know that, um, you know, in the, in the short year, um, you know, that you've been in a senator, you've had a huge impact on us. So thank you so much. Well, I appreciate that. And thank you for all that you do for our community as well. I am here today talking to uh, Representative Nicholas Muscarello. We uh, are talking about disability services today. Um, when Representative Muscarello was first elected, um, I think we tried to get on his calendar pretty quickly um, and had a, a couple of meetings right there at the beginning. And, and since that time, he's been a champion for options and for the disability services community statewide. So um, this is our annual legislative and business appreciation event. It is held virtually this year. We um, obviously can't gather together in one big room. So uh, we're thrilled to be able to host the event this way. And Representative Muscarello, if you can just tell us, you know, why options? Why disability services? Why did you choose to champion this cause? Well, I still distinctly remember when y'all came to the office and how passionate y'all were about the cause. And of course, Sylvia just does a great job of informing the public and kind of getting the message out there that, you know, sometimes we, we just, when we're not in front of it, we just don't know about it and we need more information. So I think y'all have done a great job of kind of you know, putting the message out there and letting us know which services y'all offer. So that's, that was kind of a big part of why I made the push. And of course, I do have a nephew that has Down syndrome. So, you know, it's kind of ever prevalent to me and you know, I see it every day, family members. So, you know, and, and like you said, when we met, I believe that we should support people that are doing good work for the public. And so that's why it's, from day one, it's kind of been an easy, Torch to carry from there. Yeah, it sure is an easy cause to get behind. <laughs> you know, and I, I do this professionally, but, you know, my son also receives services, um, you know, home and community based waiver services. So, you know, I see this, you know, from both angles. And, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate your support as, um, you know, a member of the options team, but also um, a, as a, a mom and your constituent. So, thank you, thank you. Um, you know, this year has been so very different for all of us. Um, it's been an extraordinary challenge trying to um, keep people healthy and safe. You know, as you know, we take care of people 24 seven. Um, there's about uh, 75 people that we, um, you know, are responsible for, you know, every day of the week, um, you know, night and day, holidays, weekends. Um, and that's been tough with this pandemic. Um, we have, you know, we're operating with um, a lot more precautions. There's a lot more that we have to do to take care of people and keep them safe. Um, but at the same time, 
reduced revenue due to the closure of some programs and reduced staff um, because you know folks are reluctant to put themselves at risk so um, you know what that translates into is we need more resources this year and you know you and your colleagues came through for us in a big way this year so thank you so much for that um, you know you want to speak to the additional um, $36.2 million appropriation um, that helped all disability services in Louisiana. Um, I, we appreciate that so much. So you want to say a few words? Uh, again, back to our initial meeting when, when Sylvia and, and you and your, and your colleague came to meet with me in my office. And of course, being new to the legislature, I, I was trying to get my feet wet and kind of get my stance under me. But, um, you know, and in this position, you're always getting tugged as far as giving more funds, giving more money. And, of course, I have to be a good steward for the taxpayer. Also being mindful of the groups and organizations like you that rely on some public funds. So that's a delicate balance that I have to, you know, walk. And um, But that being said, uh, you know, every time that uh, we have met, you have kind of laid out your foundation of what y'all provide, what services you provide. And I think the value of our money is being used, you know, we're, the money's being used wisely and it's not being wasted. And, and so that's important uh, as a steward of the taxpayer money. This year, we had additional revenue. And so we, we, you know, we took into consideration our, you know, your group and other groups and, and we it gave a little extra money to that cause. Um, I was comfortable making the vote. It wasn't really a difficult vote. Now this year we're going to have some challenges and some hurdles and and who knows i mean in this ever evolving e political cycle and system um, there are always going to be some changes so we clearly have a new administration coming in at the federal level which may make some changes at the state level or as far as finding financing and funding um so who, let's we'll see what that brings but i think at the end of the day what your group provides and what you your message that you provide to a legislator like me that i take into consideration you're doing it right. You're not being wasteful of the taxpayer dollar and we're getting a good service for money. So that, that's the kind of message that I like to relay when I'm at the Capitol talking about, you know, funding groups like such as options. Well, we, we appreciate your support. And, and this is, I will speak to that. This is a very cost effective service. Um, you know, what we do, we are community based and we provide services to people with disabilities in their own um, homes, in their own towns, in their own communities, which is a much more cost effective alternative than, you know, our previous reliance in decades past on institutional care. So I agree with you 100%. This is very fiscally responsible to, to fund these services and um, regardless of what's going on at, you know at the federal um, level or you know um, changes in administration at the state level it, having champions like you um, you know boots on the ground out there advocating for us um, is, is just invaluable um, and regardless of what's going on we know we're going to be okay because of folks like you so thank you and I'll just add one little caveat before we close I think that which makes what makes your group so different and special is that there's a buy-in from the community and there's a buy-in from the state level. Anytime I'm trying to sell a project to my colleagues on anything from state to uh, you know local funding for say my parish or my city, when they know that there's a buy-in from the locals, they like that because they're skin in the game. And I think that's what y'all bring. You know, you're you're asking for assistance, but you're also doing your part as a group to get funding from private individuals, that goes a long way. So I think that's a big selling point for your group. I commend you for that. Well, we appreciate you so much and thank you and good luck this, this next session.